I'd like to take a look at one of the handouts in um, our venting module, in venting and ventilation combustion air module. Um, specifically, um, I have a handout that is on the code guide for combustion air as far as that goes. So let's take a look at this. So the first thing I want to identify is how does the code book um, define a confined space? And the way that they do that, they do this in section 9.3.2.1 in the 2018 National Fuel Gas Code Fuel Book. That particular book defines it as a, as a space that has a volume that is less than 50 cubic feet of, of space per 1,000 B2s per hour that is in that space. Now, this would be specifically for appliances that are going to be using the air from within that building for combustion air, or from within that room for combustion air. So this does not include things that would be direct vent. So that is essentially how they decide they define a confined space. So that would mean that an unconfined space would be a space that would have more than 50 cubic feet of volume per 1,000 BTUs per hour of appliances. So specifically, um, things that might fit into that would be, um, again, appliances that maybe you've got a really large basement or a large space, you got these appliances in there that are gonna consume some of the air for combustion as well as for venting. So that's what we wanna take a look at. So what I wanna do is this particular handout is, is laid out as having Four, there's some individual areas that we're going to be looking at. So the first one that we're going to deal with is installations that require uh, a one square inch per 4,000 B2 per hour um, specific handout. So on this, on this handout. So specifically, we're looking at installations that require that, that unit. So on page 69 of the 2018 edition, in section 9.3.3.1, um, they identify this as a requirement of having two permanent openings it, um, it you cannot have um, you can't have a manual opening louver or anything like that it's got to be either a it's going to be it's got to be motorized it could be motorized but it has to be interlocked with the main burner um, which would be very important for especially commercial boilers it could also be an application where you might have um, um, you know, a situation where you might have a customer that they, they want to manually close it off so they don't have any air coming in there, that would actually not be allowed. So you got to be careful with that. So those are the requirements in there. So how do you define this? So what is what is the requirement? So what we're talking about is, is a situation where we've got all of that air communicating directly from the outdoors through either a ventilated attic or it could be all the combustion air from... Um, from something where let's say it's a ventilated crawl space or outlet air um, you know to that so you'll notice on here specifically this one has a vertical duct that is dropping down some of the air directly from this cavity all the way from there down in the mechanical room and of course they have ventilation louvers that is in this particular one that it would be normally what they're doing the one on the right here they've got a vented or a ventilated crawl space that happens to be unheated. You can see that uh, by the, uh, the louvers there. They are identifying this as having inlet air coming from that space or from that uh, area. And then the outlet air, what they're defining as outlet air, would be going vertically up. So what they're doing is, there's two reasons why they might do that. Uh, primarily, the reason for that would be that in the event that one of those louvers would become blocked, or would not uh, be open or something like that, something would block it off, that you still have one other one to do it. It's a little bit of a backup on there. Um, some of the rules on this is you gotta have, you know, the upper and lower openings have to be within, within 12 inches of the ceiling and within 12 inches of the floor for the lower one. And you cannot have a dimension that's less than three inches. So that is the absolute smallest one that you have to have on there. So that's the first one that we deal with. Let's take a look at the next one. So on the next one, 
we're going to look at an installation that requires one square inch per 3,000 BTUs per hour. So based on the image that's shown in here, and this was identified on page uh, 69 to 70 on these sections in the code book, the installations that require this would be that you would have a permanent opening. Uh, again, same, same situations as the first one, as you know, you gotta, if you wanna have a motorized louver that would shut off when the burner doesn't need to be running, you have to interlock it with something where it will not allow the main burner to operate unless that louver is 100% open. And then of course, um, again, that's the proving component of it. And this is one where you've got it, it wants to be, uh, let's say directly communicating with the outdoors through any type of a louver um, that would, or a duct that might communicate directly to the outdoors would be the way that that is identified. Now you'll notice on this one, they're showing as a louver that is coming from either the sidewall in this case, or as an alternative opening uh, from the attic is how they're doing that. Again, the smallest dimension allowed is three inches. The opening can't be smaller than the sum of the areas of that vent connectors in that space in there. That's another rule as well. But 2018 code book would be the way they do this. And again, all the all the combustion air is from the outdoors it's through a single combustion air opening and that's how they do that particular one so let's take a look at an installation that requires an opening of one square inch per 2000 b2s per hour and on this particular one in the 2018 edition uh, page 69 they identify that one as again very similar two openings um, they you can be motorized but you have to interlock them with the burner and you have to have no dimensions of anything less than three inches. Um, that is one of the requirements. And then again, the upper and lower openings are within 12 inches of the ceiling and within 12 inches of the floor. So this uh, specific one you might notice is through horizontal duct application. So I think um, you may have caught the first one here was more uh, of a vertical duct on this one right up in this area and this particular one now is dealing with horizontal application so it's 2000 b2s is every square inch on this one again one one up high and one up low um, in some areas this may be uh, applicable or appropriate um, i think they're probably somewhat compensating for the square inches per 2000 simply because you're going to have some resistance in the duct system um, I think more chances of, uh, of any type of blockage, anything like that. So that's an identified on this handout as well. And then of course, the last of the pages deals with an installation that requires one square inch per thousand B2s per hour. In the 2018 code book, it's page 69. And these are the sections also that they identify. The openings cannot be smaller than 100 square inches. No opening uh, dimension less than three inches. You gotta have an opening within 12 inches of the ceiling and 12 inches of the floor. So in our particular area up in northeastern Wisconsin and really a lot of areas could really fall into this category. What we're doing is we're gonna to try to utilize adjacent spaces within the building. So this is a really common problem where you might have a person that maybe builds around their mechanical room or builds around their basement where they decide they want to have, uh, uh, they want to, you know, maybe close off that mechanic room so you don't see all the equipment in there. So that area, what they'll typically do is, we might put two vents, one high, and we might put another one low. And what it will that allow us to do now is to take this space here plus this space and add the two together so that we combine these two spaces. And as long as those, those louvers are big enough, this will work. So that's a, a typical way that we do that for interlocking or for tying these two spaces together. Again, this is a really common issue for us in this area. And uh, that's one of those where when you run into a system that isn't venting correctly, look to see if there's any additional adjoining spaces that we could use potentially to do that. Uh, so that's a little explanation of what is the mechanical um, combustion air or confined space and what those combustion air inlet requirements would be as well.